Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Hello, all you wonderful side questers. My name is Josh Koval, and I'm the host of a video game podcast called The Still Loading Podcast, which I affectionately describe as a gaming grab bag podcast, but more on that towards the end of the episode. What I am here to discuss with all of you wonderful people today is a little unsung game called Power Pete, which was later renamed Mighty Mike. Uh, so a bit of a history about this game. Uh, I personally grew up with this game. I used to have a gaming, not really a gaming PC, it was a Macintosh Performa, and there was very limited games that I was able to play on a Mac back in the 90s. You know, I, there was a couple Star Wars ones that were pretty decent, but overall, I didn't get to play a whole lot on my home computer because Mac gaming just wasn't as much of a thing. Plus, I was pretty young, so even if there was any good stuff, you know, like Doom or something else along those lines, my parents would never have let me play it. So what I did get to play, though, is a little top-down 2D run-and-gun game called Power Pete, which came out on August 8th, 1995. It was developed by Pangea Software and published by Interplay's Mac publishing brand, MacPlay. And I have a lot of fond memories of this game. It was something my dad and I played a lot together when I was a kid. It was something we really enjoyed. He really enjoyed kind of the goofy, cheesy sense of humor. And you know what? Let's talk about what this game is about. I think it's a good way to discuss what is the plot of this game, as little as there is of one. And what better way to discuss a plot than to read it straight off of Wikipedia? And I would actually read this off of the original manual, but that is a lot more... A lot more words in that one. It's a lot wordier. So I'm going to go with a more succinct version of it and go with the Wikipedia version of the plot, which is Power Pete is an action figure residing in a toy store. After the store closes, all of the toys come to life and chaos ensues. A group of plush rabbits escape from their bin and scatter throughout the store, helpless against the hordes of the more dangerous toys. The only one able to save them is the most popular toy in the store, the action figure, Power Pete, a.k.a. Mighty Mike. Power Pete begins a crusade to try to find and save the rabbits. The other toys in the store whose sales have been eclipsed by those of Power Pete are less than happy to see the action figure and spend the game trying to hinder his efforts. Power Pete is aided, however, by a variety of weapon accessories designed for the Power Pete model that are found throughout the store. And that is the brief Wikipedia description of Power Pete. So let's talk about the game itself. The game, like I said at the beginning, is a top-down 2D run-and-gun game where you play as Power Pete and you have to rescue all these fuzzy bunnies. There are five fuzzy bunnies in each level. There are three levels in each department, and there are five departments total that you get to play through throughout the game. You have Prehistoric Plaza, which is filled with dinosaurs and cavemen and is prehistoric-themed. You have Candy Cane Lane, which is filled with gingerbread men and gumdrops and lava chocolate you have fairy tale trail which is filled with creatures from basically think of aesop's fables or the grim storybooks and just other types of fairy tales you know little miss muffet witches wolves nutcrackers which i guess isn't quite fairy tale-ish but you get what i'm saying the fourth department it's magic funhouse which has tons of different clowns and it's kind of like a more wacky style of world and then finally bargain bin which is kind of exactly what it sounds it's filled with like toys it's filled with tons of robots and cars and everything else kind of more haphazardly scattered across the world throughout these five departments you have a variety of weapons that you can choose to use in order to defeat all the different kinds of enemies you have the suction cup gun the flamethrower the musket you have a rock that's right you can just throw rocks at people isn't that great uh you also have double shot of the suction cup gun and even a triple shot you also have pies fairy dust rocket launchers rubber band guns toothpaste guns and my personal favorite and there's a few others but my personal favorite is the cake bombs that is the best weapon in the game bar none my personal favorite a hundred percent and where this game shines is in the variety of gameplay that it presents to you not only do you get all those weapons that i mentioned before but you also get 
a bunch of power-ups that enemies drop after you kill them. Some of them give you a shield, which will make you invulnerable for a temporary amount of time. There, others will create a, literally a ball of fire where a bunch of flame wheels will come out and shoot out across the screen and can take out a bunch of enemies all at once. You can also get basically something that's kind of like mortar fire, where when you collect it, Power Pete yells, fire in the hole, and then explosions happen all over the screen, which doesn't hurt you, but will hurt all the enemies. There's also one that will just completely freeze time and allows you to take out enemies one at a time or just run past them whenever you prefer. And it was incredibly satisfying if you could see all those power-ups on the ground at once and just know that as soon as you hit them, a lot of mayhem was going to happen, especially if you were able to get those mortar shells with the fire wheel combined with a time freeze and everything's going on all at once. It took out the whole screen pretty easily. And one of my personal favorite aspects and something that I will never get tired of in games are hidden secrets and hidden areas. In this game, there's so many different hidden areas that you can explore that will allow you to get some of these weapons I mentioned before uh, earlier than intended in the game. There are also secret areas that will get you extra lives, get you extra health. And by finding those things, it made exploration rewarding. And the exploration wasn't tedious because those power-up drops always gave you these satisfying hits of feedback every time you got a bunch all at once and allowed you to explore a new area because you just took out all the enemies leading up to it. The levels were not just straight up run and gun shooter type of levels. There was some puzzle solving elements involved as well. Some of it to the game's detriment. For example, in the Magic Fun House level, there is a lot of automatically moving floors and you can't run against them no matter how fast you are. And when that happens, you have to basically follow the wave of where it's taking you and hope that you land, you went on the right conveyor belt in the first place there are ways to influence the direction in which power pete aka mighty mike will go but it is still very difficult because these conveyor belts also are a maze so if you miss your turn you can't just turn back and go the way you you came you have to let it take you all the way back to the beginning and then try again and hope that you can time your movement correctly to get to the next area of conveyor belts that will move you automatically and take you to a new part of the maze so it can be a little tedious at times. And that I would say is one of the negative traits of this game. I would also say one of the negative traits is actually the the weapons. As much as I said how much I love the variety, honestly, at least for me, once you get the cake bombs, no other weapon is worth it. It does AOE damage. It takes out pretty much every enemy instantly. So if there's a bunch ganging up on you, you can kill them all at once. They're all, the only downside to the cake is that it attacks in an arc, so you can't hit anything directly in front of you. It has to be two to three feet or you know inches on the screen, whatever you want to think of it as, in front of you. So that's how that works. Uh, so that's its downfall. That's I think that was their way of trying to balance it, but if you're good with it, the enemies never get close enough to you, so it never really gives you a reason to try out all these new weapons that they continue to give you throughout the game. Honestly, what I love about this game, and this term gets thrown around way too often, but it is really a hidden gem. It's got a lot of fun variety. The weapon variety is interesting, even though, like I mentioned before, it is a fault where once you get the cake, everything else is pretty much useless. However, the enemy variety is really interesting. The world variety is really interesting. Uh, it's overall just a really well-made game. Uh, one final thing I want to bring up before I recap everything is each level is open world. You can collect the five bunnies in any order that you want to, which is really fun. And it allows players to explore at their leisure. They can pick how they want to begin and end each level, obviously other than the starting point. But the end point is entirely up to you, which makes each playthrough a little bit different, unless you decide to collect the same bunnies in the same order. And there's definitely like probably an optimal order if, if you know if a speedrunner was playing it but yeah th there's a lot to love in this game and just to kind of wrap all of this up like i said before my the the ups and downs of this game you know really fun and varied weapons even though like i said before the cake kind of ruins all of them they're still fun to use and try out and see what each one does i would say fairy dust is a close second in my opinion for if you run out of cake the level variety is amazing the enemy variety is amazing and besides the puzzles that i mentioned before is kind of a meh part of the game i would also say the music isn't that great the music is very repetitive, and while I don't hate it, I when I was replaying it for this, I genuinely was not sure if I liked it because of nostalgia or if it was actually good. I was leaning towards the fact that it's probably not very good. 
Uh, so yeah, th that's kind of my overall thoughts on the game. Uh, to wrap this all up, though, I want to give one final shout out about Mighty Mike Power Pete. So this game, you can all play it, actually. You can go to pangeasoft.net slash Mighty Mike and click on the download button. And a fan of this game, a fan of Pangea Soft's game, was given the source code by the original developers, and they have been able to port it and make it workable on modern computers. I literally downloaded a 64-bit Windows version of this game and played it on stream. It still is fun to me, and I think it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you like retro-style games. And if you want to also just check out a little known part of gaming history. You know, Mac gaming, it doesn't really get a lot of love online. And I think this game is definitely worth at least giving a shot, especially because it's free. You can't go wrong with free. So with all that said, thank you all so much for listening. And I do hope you go check this game out. If you want to check out more of my show, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff. Just search Still Loading. And you can also follow me on social media if you're so interested at Still Loading Pod on Twitter, as long as it's alive. Facebook, threads, Instagram, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm also over on Hive. Is that still a thing? I don't know. But at Still Loading Pod over on there, also on Twitch. And yeah, thank you all so much for listening and happy gaming. Do you feel like you're the only person in your circle who wants to go deep about video games regularly? We were like that too. Until now. Welcome to Crossplay Conversations, the brand new bi-weekly topical video game podcast from Luke Lewis, Joseph Hooper, and Jacob McCord. With many years of breaking it down separately on shows like the Left Behind Game Club, Player Player Podcast, and Lukewarm Games, the gang is finally coming together to publish their gaming group chat in audio form every other week. Expect roundtable reviews of the latest games, profiles of upcoming indies, and insightful conversations about essential topics in the video game industry. All with a mostly positive, insightful, and fun style. Crossplay Conversations debuts on August 1st with brand new episodes hitting every other Tuesday. Help us out by subscribing on your podcast platform of choice to get the first episodes delivered straight to your feed. And follow us on Twitter at Crossplay Convos for updates about the show. Cheers, Cheers and, and happy, happy gaming. gaming. CPOV CertainPOV.com